Good morning. Today, we'll explore including ethical considerations in decision-making. Let's go. In both our professional and personal lives, decision-making is a constant. We often go through the motions, following a process, but do we ever pause to reflect on the steps we take? Our usual process likely mirrors figure 1-7, and today, we'll dissect this process and dissect where ethics come into play. The starting point on this decision-making journey is developing a problem statement. It's not merely identifying an issue. It's about crafting a clear, concise description of the problem at hand. A good problem statement is akin to a compass, guiding us through the decision-making process. It must answer pivotal questions. What's causing concern? Who is directly impacted? And are there indirect consequences? How frequently does the problem occur and what's the magnitude of its impact? Consider this. Our product supply organization continually runs out of stock, causing over 15% of customer orders to go unfulfilled, resulting in monthly losses exceeding $300,000. To craft a good problem statement, we must gather and analyze facts diligently, seek diverse perspectives, and be cautious not to make assumptions. Simple situations can escalate into controversies when we neglect to gather and analyze the real facts. So, as we embark on our decision-making journey, let's remember the importance of crafting a precise problem statement. Ensuring our decisions are grounded in reality, steering clear of assumptions, and incorporating ethical considerations will undoubtedly lead us to more informed and responsible choices. Focusing on the stages of identifying alternatives, choosing the best one, implementing the decision, and evaluating the results. Now that we've crafted a precise problem statement, the next crucial step is to identify alternatives. Enlisting the help of others, including stakeholders, can provide a diverse range of solutions. However, there are times when involving others might not be appropriate, especially for sensitive issues. When sharing information, stick to the facts to avoid influencing others with your opinions. During brainstorming, avoid being critical of ideas, as negative criticism can stifle discussion. Write down suggestions without judgment and ask questions to gain a clearer understanding of proposed solutions. Once a set of alternatives is on the table, the group must evaluate them based on various criteria, effectiveness, risk, cost, and implementation time. It's crucial to consider laws, guidelines, and ethical principles. Ensuring the chosen alternative is legally defensible and aligns with corporate policies and ethics. The chosen alternative should withstand scrutiny from coworkers, peers, and the governing body of ethics. It must be consistent with organizational policies, consider the impact on stakeholders, and most importantly, provide a viable solution to the problem. With the alternative selected, the next challenge is implementation. People tend to resist change, so effective communication is key. Address questions like why the change is happening, what's wrong with the current approach, and how the new method benefits everyone. A well-defined transition plan, training, incentives, and modifying the reward system may be necessary to ensure a smooth shift. However, implementing change is easier said than done. Resistance is natural, and that's where communication becomes crucial. A trusted figure must answer questions, provide a clear transition plan, and make the change seem relatively easy and pain-free. After implementation, it's time to evaluate the results. Monitor if the desired effects were achieved and observe the impact on the organization and stakeholders. Were success criteria met? Were there unintended consequences? This evaluation may highlight the need for further refinements. If necessary, return to the problem development step, refine the problem statement, and repeat the process. Alternatively, the right alternative might have been chosen, but poor implementation hindered success. In such cases, Revisiting certain implementation steps may be necessary. Step one, identify the problem. Discover that Elliot, a recent hire, may be unhappy and potentially considering leaving. The challenge is how to handle this situation while considering the team's needs and Elliot's concerns. Step two, identify stakeholders. Key stakeholders are Elliot, the team relying on her, and the overall team efficiency. As the manager, you play a crucial role in maintaining a positive work environment. Step three, Consider alternatives. Confront. Elliot. Direct approach, but might stress her. Avoid confrontation. Proactive, but risks misunderstandings. Arrange a team discussion. Open dialogue to address concerns collectively. Step four. Make a decision. 
Considering urgency and team morale, a team discussion seems appropriate. It allows for open communication and potential solutions. Step 5. Evaluate the decision monitor team dynamics and Elliot's engagement. Adjust the decision based on evolving situations within the team. Unfortunately, this is the end of my topic. So, thank you everyone for watching. Have an eventful day.